It's that time again. This is Katni with your weekly Python on Hardware News. Every week, we put together the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. It is available through adafruitdaily.com. Head over to sign up and see all of the past and current newsletters, or tune in each week to hear what's going on. Adafruit is working with the team to open safely as we continue to navigate COVID-19. We are following the same safety protocols we have been since the beginning and will continue to do so. At this time, regular non-COVID related orders are shipping, but expect delays as we ramp up. We are working hard to get more items in stock, so if there's an item that's out of stock that you're looking to purchase, sign up to be notified when it's back in stock. For more information, visit adafruit.com slash open safely. CircuitPython Day is September 9th, 2020. Adafruit has chosen 9-9-2020 as the snakiest day of this year. We'll keep you posted on what's involved as the date gets closer. In general, events and happenings will include a CircuitPython team livestream, collaboration with hardware and software folks, and highlighting all things Python and Python on hardware. More information will be forthcoming. Do you have ideas or suggestions for CircuitPython Day? Are you planning your own CircuitPython Day event? Let us know via email at circuitpythonday at adafruit.com. Maker Diary has developed a mechanical keyboard using the NRF52840 microcontroller to provide connectivity through USB-C and BLE 5.0 Bluetooth. The keyboard runs CircuitPython, so it's fully customizable. Just drop a new file onto the flash drive the board presents. Code is available on GitHub. Details at makerdiary.com. The Adafruit Discord server has surpassed 22,000 members. This community is where we do all of our CircuitPython development transparently and in the open. Adafruit believes the Discord offers a unique way for CircuitPython folks to connect. Thank you to everyone who has been a member and everyone who recently joined. If you haven't already, you can join today at adafru.it slash discord. Microsoft has a Discord server for talking Python with Microsoft tools and technologies such as Python VS Code. They are offering Cloud Labs there where you can get swag. To join, visit aka.ms slash python discord. The Python Software Foundation is accepting nominations for their second quarterly Community Service Awards. Information and previous winners can be found at python.org. Proposals should be made confidentially to the board by sending email to psf at python.org. Melissa demonstrates part one of her Python-powered custom animated LED sign series, covering the assembly of the sign and everything you need to do to 3D print and build the hardware. Subscribe to Maker Melissa's Lab on YouTube to see the next part in the series. The Talk Python podcast features Device Simulator Express. Maybe you've heard of the Circuit Playground Express, BBC Microbit, or the fancy Adafruit Clue. They aren't too expensive, ranging from $15 to $50 each. But for large groups, such as classrooms, this can be a lot of money. Moreover, getting your hands on these devices can sometimes be tricky as well. With an extension for VS Code called Device Simulator Express, you can have instant access to all three, virtually, of course. This cool extension adds a visual emulator as well as the native interactions such as buttons and temperature sensors. Details and links to the episode are available at talkpython.fm. Serpano is a CircuitPython dev board designed for breadboards. It delivers 3.3 and 5 volts at 2 amps and an adjustable 1.8 to 12 volts at 3 amps, current measurement, and a feather-like pinout. It can be powered from USB, a 4.5 to 12 volt DC jack, or a LiPo battery. It also includes a 1.3 inch 240 by 240 LCD for data visualization. This is a first prototype. For more information and to follow development, check out Arturo182 on Twitter. In this week's CircuitPython deep dive live stream, Scott streamed the unboxing of his Seed Studio WIO terminal, ESP32 SPI networking API changes, and optimizing JSON.load. Check out the latest video and past videos at adafru.it slash deep dive. Greg Davil posts to Twitter, an update to CircuitPython being ported to the Orange Crab FPGA board. Code is available on GitHub. A blog now running on solar power. It uses a Raspberry Pi 3B plus with sensing provided by an Adafruit INA260 sensor read via Adafruit Blinka, the CircuitPython compatibility layer. Details at lurentius.com. Tyler Crumpton posts to Twitter, a foot pedal to start and stop audio for transcription. A sewing machine pedal and one resistor are connected to a Seedwino shower board running Adafruit CircuitPython 5.3.0 and 12 lines of code. The pedal acts as a variable resistor to measure voltage using an analog pin. Python T is back with the incredible Lorena Mesa. They discuss the Pi Ladies overhaul, PSF election reform, and PSF advocacy. Check it out at twitch.tv slash nnjaio. Time series simply represent data points over time. 
Julian posts to Medium, Darts, Time Series Made Easy in Python. This article introduces Darts, their attempt at simplifying time series processing and forecasting in Python. Learn five Python features you probably don't know in this article on TowardDatascience.com, including a few functionalities that are less commonly used but still immensely useful. Tim Grenholm posts a goodbye party held for the end of life of Python version 2, including this snaky cake. Read about eight world-class software companies that use Python in this article by Jason Reynolds on realpython.com. Text Hero is a Python toolkit to work with a text-based dataset quickly and effortlessly. It's very simple to learn and designed to be used on top of Pandas. Code is available on GitHub. Learn about extending Python with Go in part two of a Python and Go series on ardenlabs.com. Blur Detection 2 is blur detection with OpenCV in Python. Code is available from Will Brennan on GitHub. The number of CircuitPython-supported microcontrollers in single-board computers continues to grow. There were no new boards added this week, but several are being worked on. Are you interested in adding a new board to CircuitPython? Check out the Adafruit Learn system for a series of guides about getting your board added to CircuitPython and CircuitPython.org. There are seven new Python on hardware-related guides in the Adafruit Learn system this week, including Use a Pi Portal in CircuitPython to build a customizable remote that works over Wi-Fi to control a Roku media player. Using the Roku external control protocol and taking advantage of the Pi Portal's touchscreen as a simple input method, in this guide from Dylan Harada. ElectionCal is a website that provides U.S. voting deadlines. Use CircuitPython to connect to the site, process data, and display it in a nice clean way on your Pi Portal, in this guide from Alvaro Figueroa. This greatly simplified overhaul of a 2017 project uses CircuitPython, a Feather M4 Express, and a PropMaker Featherwing to build new internals for a Lucio Blaster. Dual stream native MP3 playback eliminates the need for multiple pieces of hardware previously required to play music and sound effects at the same time, and power, amplification, and NeoPixel circuits have been similarly simplified. Use the LED animation library to create highly awesome lighting effects in this guide from John Park. Build a stunning LED whip that reacts when you crack it using CircuitPython, the Feather NRF52840 Sense microcontroller, and the PropMaker Featherwing, including motion sensitivity with two levels of swing-based animations triggered by the motion of your arm, all easily customizable in this guide from Aaron St. Blaine. The current number of CircuitPython libraries is 262. This includes both the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries and the CircuitPython community libraries. There are no new libraries this week, but there are a significant number of updated libraries. As always, visit circuitpython.org libraries to download the latest Adafruit CircuitPython bundle. Included in this week's updates from the CircuitPython team, the main focus of Brian's work over the last week has been the AS7341 11-channel multispectral light sensor from AMS. This is a pretty neat sensor that holds a lot of capabilities in a small package. Within the 3x2mm footprint are 16 paired CMOS light sensors for separate light wavelength bands, as well as two dedicated sensors with no clear filter, one near-infrared, and one flicker detection sensor. One feature he finds particularly interesting is the LDR pin that allows you to control an external LED to aid in spectral measurement. Current controls allow you to use the LED to its full capacity without burning it out with too much current. In the CircuitPython core, there are a lot of things going on behind the scenes. We use background tasks to ensure that things like audio, USB, and display keep working even while your code.py is running. Jeff's current project is to enhance this code and restore performance that we gave up temporarily in order to add the lower power mode that is helpful for battery-powered projects. Melissa worked some more on the Blinka Pi portal library and wrote a guide for it. Along the way, she found several bugs with it, with some of them occasionally stopping her from continuing on the guide without addressing the bugs. Eventually, though, she was able to get everything working. She was able to get it running on both Raspberry Pi 4 and the FT232H so that it could be run directly on her computer. Check out the guide in the Adafruit Learning System. EuroPython 2020 this year will be an online conference from July 23rd to 26th. Attending the conference days will require a ticket, and participating in the sprints will be free. Check out ep2020.europython.eu for details. PyCon AU has announced they're holding PyCon Line AU in August. Check out 2020.pycon.org.au for more information. Pi Gotham is a New York City-based eclectic Pi-centric conference covering many topics. Pi Gotham TV is taking place October 2nd and 3rd, 2020, with a single track of talks presented online. The call for proposals is now open at cfp.pygotham.tv. Visit 2020.pygotham.tv for more information. Pi India 2020 will be held online from October 3rd through 5th, 2020. 
A call for proposals is now open through the 14th of August. Visit in.pycon.org 2020 for more information regarding the CFP and the conference. Translating CircuitPython is now easier than ever. Translations make their project more accessible to a broader range of folks. Adding or improving translations is a great way to get started contributing to the project. With the help of fellow open source project WebLate, we're making it even easier. You can create a new account just for WebLate or sign in using other sites like GitHub or Google. If you write another language, visit adafru.it slash translate cp, sign in, and start translating. Looking for more Python on hardware all week? Join the Adafruit community on Discord and check out the Help with CircuitPython and CircuitPython channels. We're over 22,000 strong and continuing to grow. You'll find a supportive, positive community filled with like-minded folks. Join at adafru.it slash discord. And that is your Python on hardware news for this week. Visit Adafruit Daily to subscribe to the newsletter or tune in again next week.